right now, like we are sitting with a huge lack of inventory of good houses. This is really important to sort of decision. There's like a lack of good houses on the market because people that have good houses aren't really in a position where they want to lose money necessarily. And it doesn't mean that they don't necessarily want to sell. It's just, they don't want to lose money. And if I go through the, like our list of people here, yeah. like this is a list of people that are like, either they are in a position where they need to sell, um, or they would only do it if the, if the, if it made sense financially. I think another factor, the way that the lack of inventory is playing into it is like, even if I did sell, what am I going to find? What am I going to buy? Yeah. Right. Because there's nothing for them yeah. to move into. Right. And so part of this is, is like, if you start having this conversation with somebody, at least then we can know what we're looking for on yeah. the other side, on the buy side. Yeah. Um, like is how do we, like, how do we solve this problem? This is literally what we do is solve problems. Yeah. And, and so this is a particular problem is that we don't know who's willing to sell because they are maybe under the wrong impression about how sellable their house is. But I think also, like, it depends on what they want to do as well, right? Like, do they want to sell because they already have somewhere else? Like, say someone has two properties and just wants to get one. Or do they want to sell, but they still need to get another property? It's like, well, the property you're going to get is also lower in price. So it's again, relative, it's just hard to right? find because right. So I would understand how if if they're having and you talked about this in the last meeting too. Like if they're having a hard time finding what they would like to move into, then it's not such a big rush in selling because they're not really getting the price they want anyway. It's almost like I mean it's tough to time it, but it's almost like a buy first scenario. Like if you have a good product, you can probably sell it in a week. So maybe yeah. you start looking first and lock and yourself in and then... That's the conversation I think that we should be having. Like this list of, like what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got like 11 or 12 people here. Of those, like we should have, out of our network, we should have a list of like probably 30 people that we just haven't had that conversation with yet. Is like, would you... Like they're, they're probably just not engaging with us to have that conversation because they're like, well, A, there's nothing to buy and B, I don't think I, I could sell my house right now. Like, I, I think I would really struggle to sell my house. And so they're like, they're, they're like, I don't even think I would buy or sell first because they're working under a different set of, um, beliefs. I, th I think, and we've had this conversation before, um, and I can think of a couple examples of people right now. It's like. Let's get in, let's take a look at your house, let's do a full home audit, let's declutter it, let's prepare it to sell in case you want to sell. And then start looking at the same time. If you find something that you love, put an offer in, and yeah. then your house will be ready to go within a week. Right. As opposed to not doing anything. And what's the, what's the, what, are, what are they and saying if you back? Don't, and if you don't buy, your house is better anyway you're happier with what you live in at the moment. Right. Yeah. 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 There's some work for you to do, but like the advice and the direction and, and the access to our people. Yeah. Like that's all free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and, and I think, I think, it, you know, if you get added to this list as well, like we can start playing matchmaker if we were to build this list out. Yeah. To like 30 people. If we had 30 people that were looking to buy and or sell, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be at least somebody that matches. Yeah. Where it's like, we could actually just put the two of you together here. Mm -hmm. um, what's the pushback on, on that? I think just the general human nature of like life being busy, maybe not realizing how much better your life could be. Right. It's a kind of like little people, bit of pain first. People are just used, like, life just keeps moving and it's busy and it's like, oh, yeah, we only have one bathroom. We're not super happy, but, like, we're okay. Tomorrow. It seems like they would uh, yeah, rather just pushing it down the road, keep right? living with that situation than to do something about it. Like, it's too much work. Or but for sure, if they it. do do something yeah. and then 
their life improves. And how, why were we doing yeah, that for why? so long? Yeah. yeah. Why yes. didn't we do this before? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess what the offer here is, you know, let's get, give you a checklist yeah. of things. Yeah. Um, and, and more importantly than just the, you know, it's not just a checklist. It's a checklist with solutions beside it as well. It's like, if you need help actually like removing the stuff, um, you know, it doesn't have to go to a landfill. Like there are places where things can go that has a happy ending, like furniture bank, for example. Um, you know, there, there are donation centers. There's a lot of different ways that things could go. Um, so like, how do we help you with that? Uh, you know, do you have a closet full of half or completely empty paint cans? Mm -hmm. I just got rid of that. I yeah. Have. So where does, <laughs> where does that go? Where do you take it? Well, there's only one it's place un you can take it. You have to take it to the transfer station yeah. on toxic Tuesdays or whatever. Like you have to take it at the particular time. And it's like, it's not a super simple process. Yeah. So how do we, like, how can we help you to be able to manage that particular problem? Um, you know, make your house sale ready without that intention of necessarily selling. Just like it's ready. Mm -hmm. um, but this list of people that we know that would in a particular situation, uh, if, you know, if everything lined up and it was perfect, they would execute. Things are not perfect for them right now. And so they're either looking to make a change in where they live or her, to the home that they currently yeah. own. Okay. And so in a lot of cases, like this stuff can be very, very cheap or free, um, you know, all the way up to like full renovations. Right. And then there's, and then there's the move option. Right. Okay. So what I think a lot of people misunderstand about what it is that we do is like we offer solutions for these things and moving is the nuclear solution. Mm -hmm. So we offer everything from like BB gun to nuclear and everything yeah. in between. Yeah, right. And, and I guess also what people see is realtors trying to sell their house. So that's kind of like the message they get from most realtors. Right. So it's hard for them to see right away that we actually would like to help your living situation, not, not just sell right. your house. And I think most people's heads go to the nuclear first. And they're like, this isn't working for sale. Mm. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I know I've been there like, sell it. Can't take it anymore. <laughs> Um, and so our job should be that first question is like, why? W like, seriously, why do you want to move? Cause yeah. moving sucks. Um, you know, we make it better, but it still sucks. It's still a difficult thing. Like you still have to pack all your stuff yeah. and, and move it and then unpack it and then get settled in there. And then it's a change of yeah. scenery and everything else that comes along with that. Yeah, right. Moving is the last resort. And so our thing is like, how can we help you first? And then if moving is part of that solution, if, right. if it's something that has to be done, how do we help you with that as well? Um, so what I would like to do is, is to make a conscious effort of like, let's engage with people and have that conversation. Like our last email that went out mm. was like about my particular fear yeah. of, of selling the house. Like that was something that I feared and this is what I do for a living. And I was like, okay, where does all this stuff go? What do I do with the kids? How do we keep it clean? And I was like, this is minimum a 30 to 60 day headache. Yeah. Massive headache for me to sell what we live in currently. Um, so I understand where that comes from, but let's have the, the next set of conversations is around, um, you know, like the, the, the home audit and understanding like here are like the different sort of like layers of improving your life. First one is like spring cleaning, mm -hmm. right? Second, and, and there's probably like, there's probably a, um, uh, there's, there's, there's probably a yard sale somewhere yeah, in there. Declutter. Like this is the time of year to start thinking about like, is there a neighborhood yard sale that you can participate in and start thinking about what stuff needs to not be with you anymore. Sort of step by step, like here's, 
this first solution is just like at the cleaning and decluttering and then all the way down to like move. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we can give you some ideas on improving your life without necessarily selling. Like that's the matter, right. That's right? Yeah, and and it could even be some like how tos. Is like, you know, what I found in my in my cabinets like two toasters. <laughs> Neither one of them work. <laughs> Why do I have two toasters? It's stupid. <laughs> like like I I don't know how to put them together to make one that that does work. So, you know, what do you do with old electronics? What do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like what always happens is like uh, you lose a sock in your dryer and it it ends up becoming a extra Tupperware in your Tupperware drawer. I don't know how that happens. Really? <laughs> a sock? Lost, lost a sock and now it's Tupperware. And it's so much maybe Tupperware. Your, maybe your kids may have something where does, to do with it. Where does this come from? I don't, yeah, that all that sort Somebody of stuff. And it's just like, <laughs> if I, if, and I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, well, I would never wear this sock. My toe like comes right out the end of it. Like, why do I still have this sock? Yeah. Like gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, some stuff like that. And, and again, like, what do you do with textiles? Well, there's actually a recycling for textiles. There's a place for textiles to go. Mm -hmm. So kind of going through that is, is like, here's how you deal with these particular things. Don't throw socks in the garbage. It's not where textiles go. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to be around like talking about you know, what's happening in the, in, like, there's nothing for sale. There's nothing for sale. And so how do we remedy that issue for people on both sides? And, or how do we get them to improve the space that they're currently in right now? Like, how can we not get them to, but how can we help them? How can we get them? <laughs> yeah. I see a bunch of shit in your window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hi. <laughs> no, no one is gonna want to. No one is gonna want to invite us to barbecues or anything. So we're gonna be analyzing their house. Oh, you can do something about that and that. Yeah, and and it is like this thing is that we do analyze that stuff.